The Panama Canal is a century-old marvel that transformed global trade, but its glory days may be waning. Recent images reveal shockingly low water levels, evidence of a severe drought that forced restrictions on passing ships, and a crisis that sent ripples through the world economy. A potential alternative route to the simmering conflict in the Red Sea highlights the vulnerability of these maritime lifelines. Against this backdrop, Mexico is betting on the interoceanic corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. At the narrowest point in the country, a staggering $4.5 billion investment aims to modernize a century-old rail line, upgrade ports, and establish sprawling industrial parks. It's envisioned as a faster and more cost-effective land bridge than its Panamanian rival. Could this revitalized corridor shift the balance of power in global trade and finally boost the long ailing economy of Southern Mexico? Let's look at this crisis unfolding at the Panama Canal. See this narrow strip of land separating North and South America? Right here lies the Panama Canal, a century old marvel of engineering. It carved a shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific, saving ships thousands of miles by eliminating the need to circle the tip of South America. But look closer. Can you see this blue slither snaking through the land? That's the canal, and an essential part is Lake Gatun. This giant artificial lake is a crucial reservoir, feeding water into the canal's complex lock system. Ships literally climb and descend on this watery staircase to cross the continent. It's a fantastic feat, but heavily dependent on a steady water supply. And herein lies the problem. Look again at the lake. See how low the water level is? A severe drought is ravaging this region. Water isn't replenishing as it should. This means less clearance for ships, forcing them to carry less cargo. Those strict limits on crossings? That's because there's just not enough water to maintain normal operations. The effects ripple outward. Imagine you're a shipper. This waterway was your fastest way across the Americas. Now you face delays, extra costs, and a logistical nightmare. Some shippers simply need help to afford to wait, forcing them onto costly detour routes or resorting to desperate bids just to skip the queue. Panama is a lifeline for 3% of global trade. You can quickly see how this disruption has massive repercussions. Is there a solution? There are short-term fixes, but this drought highlights the canal's inherent vulnerability. Climate change brings unpredictability. While engineers scramble, the world witnesses firsthand how reliant it is on this aging infrastructure. Where is the solution? Look directly north here in Mexico. They've had an ambitious idea simmering for centuries. What if, at this narrowest point where oceans nearly touch, you built a land bridge for goods instead? This sparks the promise of a modern, revitalized corridor and a potential rival to the crisis-hit Panama Canal. For centuries, global powers saw the strategic value of connecting the oceans here. It was the dream of Spanish conquistadors. Even the great explorer Alexander von Humboldt saw its potential to transform trade. Even if a full-blown canal proved too complex, there were always those who envisioned a land-based route. Mexico continued the idea after gaining independence. Surveys were conducted, with one audacious proposal suggesting a railroad to shuttle goods across the isthmus. Sadly, money and political stability were constant barriers in the 1800s. But that just shows the persistence of this vision. It refused to die. Fast forward to today. Mexico has the finances and political will to make the dream a reality. The Interoceanic Corridor Project aims to revitalize that century-old railroad as its centerpiece. Think of trains ferrying containers between two modernized ports, Salina Cruz on the Pacific and Coatzacoalcos on the Atlantic. But it's not just about the tracks. See these zones? That's the plan for sprawling industrial parks all along the route. They see this as a chance to attract massive investment, lure manufacturing, and spark development in Mexico's long-neglected southern regions. 
It's a vast, multifaceted adventure, part transportation, part economic miracle. It's a bold plan, and the $4.6 billion price tag makes you realize this is no pipe dream. Mexico is betting big. Think of this as a railway and a massive opportunity to redraw trade routes in the Americas and beyond. But what does this transformation look like? The central focus is revitalizing a 132-mile stretch of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec Railway, Line Z, reaching approximately 85% completion. This modernized rail line is the linchpin, providing a land-based route for containers to move swiftly between the two coasts. Two deep-sea ports, Salina Cruz on the Pacific and Coatzacoalcos on the Gulf of Mexico, are undergoing radical transformations through dredging, expanded docking facilities, and investment in advanced cargo handling technology. The aim is to make these ports capable of accommodating colossal modern container ships and ensuring lightning-fast offloading and reloading to maximize transit efficiency. Alongside this massive transportation focus, Mexico envisions creating 10 strategically placed industrial parks along the corridor's route. These parks are at the core of its economic revitalization goals for southern Mexico. They'll tap into available local natural gas for energy with tax incentives and simplified trade regulations to lure investment and stimulate manufacturing ventures. To tie the entire enterprise together, infrastructure upgrades to regional roads, three connected airports, Minatitlan, Iztapec, and Huatulco, and communication infrastructure like a fiber optic network are critical pillars, ensuring goods, people, and information flow through the corridor seamlessly. This corridor project aims to process an estimated 1.4 million containers annually and bolster the Mexican economy. If the corridor seamlessly transitions from ship to rail to ship again, potentially saving valuable transit time compared to maritime routes, Mexico could redraw the shipping map. This shorter route and the promise of cost savings are the prime selling points to entice shipping lines away from established Panama Canal-based routes. But hold on, the global shipping crowd? They raise eyebrows, whispering that this grand corridor is more of a pipe dream than a genuine threat. Let's dig into why they're skeptical. Think about it, 8 million containers move through that 50-mile Panama Canal every year. Now compare that to a railroad stretching over 200 miles of rugged land with those revitalized Mexican ports. Can they keep up? It's about more than how fast trains go or how fancy the new cranes are. Can they seriously handle the massive volume moving by Panama? See, shipping lines are in the business of efficiency. Every second counts and even tiny delays cost big money. And here's where the geography of Mexico's land bridge matters. Sure, it looks shorter on a map than sailing around South America, but trains aren't magic. Remember, a ship zings right through the water, but freight trains rumble over uneven terrain, have speed limits, and require intricate loading and unloading operations. This means a Panama Canal route still might be a lot faster overall. Another hurdle, what if things go sideways? We've seen droughts cripple the Panama Canal, and it's not just weather we worry about. Global conflicts, labor issues, any hiccup along these vital trade routes causes chaos. Here's where a project like Mexico's corridor offers a glimmer of possibility. Maybe not as the main road, but as a viable backup when everything else goes haywire. But to make this backup option truly work, it must be more than just Mexico going at it alone. Picture this, the US, China, major ports, shipping lines, they all need to get on the same page. Investment in the latest shipping tech coordinated planning and smoothing out any snags would turn the corridor from a risky bet to a reliably faster alternative when crisis strike. If that level of international cooperation comes together, there could be unexpected winners. Imagine those ships headed for Houston. Why jam up the Panama Canal when you could dock in Long Beach, zip the containers across Mexico by rail, and poof! 
Suddenly, you've taken the pressure off the canal and found a quicker route to a U.S. port like Houston. So, yeah, the corridor faces hurdles. It's about overcoming those doubts. The proof isn't in fancy slideshows, but in whether those containers are zooming across Mexico faster than those ships can churn through the Panama Canal. Is Mexico's interoceanic corridor a game changer or a failed ambition? Tell me your take in the comments below. And if you like this analysis, hit like, subscribe, and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss out on future discussions.